welcome. The Quilting Bee has certainly changed over the years. Today is a special show. We have guests visiting us, and they all have brought their individual projects. And because of lap quilting, they're all working on individual things rather than one great big quilt. A couple of the gals are a part of the North Carolina Quilt Symposium. And would you believe the North Carolina Lily on a t-shirt, on a tote bag, and even stationery? This is the sort of thing that you can do in your state or your county or even your parish once you get organized and as a whole group then you can more or less do what we have done here on this calendar also. The whole idea behind the North Carolina Quilt Symposium is formed really to promote and perpetuate the art of quilting. And in this case we're putting out a quarterly calendar so we can alert people to when there'll be a new say an opening or a, a show, a museum that will involve quilts or something that will pertain to the art of quilting. We want to also think today about the fact that we are connecting the three layers and what are the tools, what are we going to need. We're going to need needles and I always like to recommend a short needle. Now that means a higher number will have a shorter needle. They even go as high as a 10 or 11 and that's a real short needle. Some of them even come with extra large eyes, which makes it easier for you to see the thread. But I do think that a short needle will produce a more even and a more consistent stitch. We're also going to use the thread, the quilting thread. Now it comes in 100% cotton, or you can get a blend today. I, I really prefer the cotton. It has a nice wax coating on it, and I have found that you really don't even need to pull your thread through wax anymore. Some people prefer the beeswax. Maybe you've been in the habit of using it and you're just more comfortable with it. You can see an array of thimbles and I do think it's necessary. You're not only going to need the thimble to help direct the eye of the needle through those three layers, but some people have gotten in the habit of using it in their offhand and I think that works nicely also. This little thimble with a flat head on it is nice because when that needle comes through you need something to protect your fingers. They get calloused. And once that, the tip of the needle hits that, you realize you've connected the three layers. And that way, you can take your one or your three stitches and go on from there. I have found that in quilting myself, I am more comfortable without a hoop or a frame. But I think you've got to more or less try and experiment and find which way works for you. Um, in doing lap quilting without a frame, I think it's more or less a technique of learning to manipulate the fabric towards you. I think you, you find both hands are working. I've always admired ladies when I've watched them at a big quilting frame where they more or less quilt in, in what I call almost a rock and roll motion. Their thumb rests up on the top of the quilt and almost acts as a balance and then this, where the thimble is, rests behind and helps to bring it through. So today we're going to actually spend time watching five different ladies handle the fabric and, and what's more than that, get to see the wonderful projects that they're working on. Come join me in the studio. Welcome Charlotte Quilters Guild. It's a real thrill to have someone here on the set with me. It's been kind of lonely here and I'm looking forward to today's show and, and really talking about the art of quilting, connecting the three layers. I thought we'd take time to introduce everyone before we get into quilting. Sue McCarter, thank you for coming. Ann Dickerson, Ellen Eames, Jerry Clark, and Maxine Wood over there with a Dresden plate. Before we actually zoom in on close-ups of everyone quilting, I thought we'd take a few minutes and talk about the foolproof knot. I have found it to be the answer. Um, for pulling a knot through the three layers, and I'd like to demonstrate it just once here, the fact that we go ahead and thread the needle and then take the unknotted end, and I like to think of it coming towards the needle and grabbing it between and then simply wrapping it once, twice, sometimes three times, and then simply slide that all the way down through. And when you slide it, you're going to find that you're usually left with a little, you have to kind of pull it there, but you're left with a little, little tail and that, well, the tail is not going to, there it is. There is the tail. And sometimes you have to snip off that end. But that's the end that you pull all the way through. Do you use that knot? I do. Sue, very good. I'm going very to, effective. I'm anxious to see what all of you are working on. Everyone has a different project today. And um, what exactly, can you show and see exactly what you're working this, on? This is the back of a, a vest, an iris vest, designed by Carol Hollis in 
Topeka, Kansas. Oh, it's beautiful. It's now, made I out of glow sheen. I recognize this is, I showed some of Dorothy Brinkman's. Yes, this is uh, Dot Brinkman's uh, lattice design yes, on the background. Yes, that's so fitting with that, uh, with the floral design. And I have the feeling that this iris would just keep coming down the vest. Does the front have the iris the on it The front has iris on it also, and one of the leaves crosses from the right to the left side. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, what have you put in here, Sue? What is this? Uh, I'm using flannel uh, as my middle layer because it's not as bulky, and I can wear my vest year-round. That's a good idea. And I understand that you quilt with a hoop and without, both ways? Or? That's right, yes. And tell me how you get, when you, you kind of change the tension on that. I notice it's kind I, of loose. I there. do. I make my tension very loose so that I can get uh, uh, a good rocking motion with my right. with my needle, uh, pushing up with my left hand underneath and with my right hand uh, with my thimble. I rock the needle back and forth so that I can take my little Gosh, stitches. you take more than, how many do you take at each time? Oh, I take five or six each oh, time. That's, that's great. Thank you. All the faster now do you but unless you have a loose tension you can't do this right but you see how she navigates the eye of that needle is really going through it's determined by your thimble isn't it that's that's what's, right that's what's, what's doing it and what do you use on your aff offhand anything well particular? when it gets very sore i put some adhesive tape underneath oh. <laughs> or just quit and rest <laughs> for an hour quit. or two that's right. go wash dishes oh that's lovely and then you're going to do that in all ecru thread that's correct so now, now what when i get into the design part i will change to the background color thread uh, and i'll quilt very closely to my applique so that it will stand out mm, that's going to be beautiful sue i love it it really is while we're here i'm i'm anxious to see this large thing you've brought can we show that and Yes, my partner and I, Judy Bryan, designed this bridal quilt. We began doing research on women and women's quilts and got very interested in one aspect of a woman's life, which is her wedding and her marriage, and uh, found that uh, there is a custom uh, in different parts of the United States of a wedding quilt. And we designed this quilt together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very symbolic. Uh, each block uh, means something. And we're now teaching a, a course on it in Charlotte. Oh, I want to sign up. It just sounds marvelous. Now, tell me, you, I see you're quilting this in, you're using one of these hoops. Yes, we right, are. Right, right. standing hoop. And uh, will all of the background be the straight lines, or are you going to change that? What will you do there? Uh, no, all of the background will be the same. It'll be the double straight lines. And it'll uh, be going in fill, this way also? And it will be going, yes, diagonally. And look, you've pulled um, the cording through here for that. Uh, yes, we have used the cord quilting in the book. True Lover's Knot in each of the corners and in the hearts. Oh, the colors are just beautiful. They really are. I, I, I look at certain fabrics and remember where I've used them myself. <laughs> that, that was part of a vest I had. I think the most fun we had, I, I did the cornucopia, and this little uh, pineapple is little teeny uh, half inch pieced hexagons. Oh, I can't believe that. Look at that. That is beautiful. That is just lovely, Sue. Oh, it really is. And I like the swag. This kind of pulls it all together. This yes, is lo it now. Does. Is there meaning in this too? Yes. Or? In most of the bridal quilts, we found they used very elaborate borders. They used the swag, and then of course the bow knots. Uh, it was a custom of never having a uh, cutting a, a thread, a cutting a ribbon, and they would tie all of their ribbons together. Well, now how are you going to share this? Are you going to have it six months of the year, and then she's going to no, have it six months? No, we're making months? another one. This is oh. hers, and, and we're making mine right now during the class. Will your colors be the same, or are they no? Different? I'm doing mine in uh, uh, peaches and greens. Oh, uh, in glosheen. Oh, we'd love to see that also. Glosheen is a great fabric. It I've is. enjoyed working for it. With it, um, polished cotton. When you wash it, it lo uses loses a lot of its sheen but uh, the glow sheen retains it and it, it is lovely. And I love the colors that you're working on. Can, as long you. as we're holding up a big one, let's, let's look at this. Okay. Can you describe it for us, Anne? What, um, well, this is a pine tree pattern. I got this particular pattern out of Jeffrey Gutchin's book, Quilt Design Workbook, and I'm making it for my mother to put in front of a picture window over her couch, and there are tall pine trees outside the window that I've always enjoyed. Oh, that's so appropriate. So you're give. This is a real labor of love. Yes, you're it is. doing this, this is and giving Christmas it away. And birthdays. For <laughs> and now you quilt just on your lap, um, without a hoop or a frame or anything. And no thimble. And and no thimble. I didn't <laughs> realize right. that. I do oh, everything my wrong, but goodness. It. But I noticed she is using the tape. We haven't had a chance to talk about that. But masking tape, um, different forms of it, has been a great help. Don't you think? As a guideline yes. for quilting, I think. 
you must remember not to leave it on for like a month or so and, and it might uh, absorb you know in the fabric but I think it's great you can get different widths and there's even new tape out that you can pull off the desired width you want and uh, what you do is you line this up with the seam line and then quilt right on the outside of it. It's especially great for dark fabrics. It, right, where you can't see any marking mm -hmm. and especially with all the straight lines you've got going on there. Well, I just love that. It is just beautiful. What will you do out here in the, in the border? I haven't decided yet. I found that if I go ahead and start with the things I do know that sometimes when I get there, it just all it'll, falls together. It'll, it'll happen. Well, it is beautiful. It really is. She's, is this a Christmas present? Yes. Think? Oh, is it really? <laughs> We've given it away. Ellen, I love those yes. colors. They are just beautiful. You hold it up, Ann, can you take a corner of that sure. and we can see that this will be a wall hanging. Yes. And um, this is for someone else. This is commission work. Uh, yes, it is. Um, I don't usually do that because I hate to give away. <laughs> I <laughs> give away things to my children, quilts that I've made, but uh, it's sort of a wrench to give away something you've worked as long on. And, and this is one of my favorite fabrics, which I bought in California about two years ago. And I find that I, I do pick up fabrics here and there you have to in order to have something that's a little different looking. And I'm almost out of it now. Don't know what I'll do then. But Ellen, but I like, look how she's uh -huh. taken the time and where she has cut out her diamonds. She has centered each one of her little flowers. Uh, it, it's just so evident, the time and the patience you've, you've taken with that. Also, uh -huh. notice that Ellen has started quilting uh -huh. in the center, and that's one point we do need to make uh -huh. in all of our, yes. uh, whatever form of quilting you do, uh -huh. that it's important to start in the center and work uh -huh. out towards the end. You wouldn't want to start at the border uh -huh. and work in. Well, I like to use this round hoop, too, because uh, the most comfortable way to quilt, of course, is always coming towards yourself. This way I can turn it to reach odd angles, and I'm never uncomfortable with it, and again, I can adjust the tension to suit myself. Right. So it's uh, a very enjoyable thing to me. I sort of feel like a stitch is a stitch and I'm accomplishing something that I want to keep or someone will always treasure. So right. it's well, a labor of love. But it I really is beautiful. Well, I, I can't go by w without yeah. talking about that lovely jacket in the back. We've all, we're going to do a couple shows on vests and I think it has become so popular. Now this is more than just a vest. It's a whole jacket and it it is so rich looking. It is just yeah, beautiful. I sort of got carried away with purple. <laughs> <laughs> well, turn it around so I we can see the back. I with side. one piece of, of Pima cotton in the purple, and then I found that over the years I had collected a number of pieces of purple calicos and um, tie prints. And, and the maroon, all the way together. it goes in. They all and blended together. It's beautiful. And I like the way you've taken the angle and then you've broken it by mm -hmm. having the straight. Well, yes, the pattern has a set-in piece in the side, and this gives it shape. I like that very much. I do, it's too. It's a very flattering jacket And not so boxy. No. It is just, I understand so, you're teaching yes. a class in Yes, that. I'm teaching a class in this. It's uh, something new for Open me. Open up the lining so we can get the full effect of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, just beautiful. It really is. Very nice. Jerry, what are you working on? That's a I'm whole working on a cherry basket, mm -hmm. and it's going to be a pillow for my Dan, which is Christmas colors, red mm -hmm. and green. I was telling Ann that um, I had made a schoolhouse pillow, and somehow I felt I needed another pillow that was a picture, not a block pattern. Mm -hmm. So I chose the cherry basket. Now you've said it; it is on the diagonal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So when the I see, and then what? Um, and you're just more or less doing outline quilting, aren't mm -hmm. you? just around the, um, do you do a quarter inch or do you go in closer to the, I think? Well, in here it's quarter inch right. and I applique the handle on and pieced the blocks. Right. You could almost go ahead and quilt some flowers coming out of that basket, couldn't mm -hmm. you? I mean, if you wanted I was thinking about it or maybe um, if I could make some little cherries in the corner with a little, you know how cherries right. always look with the, on the stems with a little leaf hanging off. How do you all feel about um, colored quilting thread? I, I find I have a tendency to pick up the white and the ecru more than often, but I, I do get a lot of people writing and saying, how do you know what color thread to use? Do you think it's determined by the back of your fabric or? or well, uh, if I'm doing very elaborate quilting, I try not to do it in a print because it doesn't show up. So I like the shadow that the quilting makes and I tend to do it in a plain color fabric and because I don't feel that my stitches are perfect, I find that matching thread allows me a little room for error mm -hmm. where the 
contrasting thread. Every stitch has to be perfect. I and I have not reached that degree of <laughs> perfection yet. I've always said in class that um, that if, if your stitches were done on a sewing machine, they'd be perfectly mm -hmm. consistent. So I always say that you need to get perfectly uh, inconsistent stitches because that's the that's the human quality of quilting and uh, it is hard to get them I think our goal is to have them short and even and together but they're but they're if they were perfect they'd be done on a sewing machine so uh, well I'm more relaxed about it if I if my f thread matches my background and I don't yes. have to worry about every stitch being perfect well that's a good so. point it really is oh it's Maxine I love the colors in that Dresden plate Ed, you look at those colors and it's kind of a step back in time I think Tell us about that block. Wasn't that an old from an old collection, or the <clears throat> patches were given to me by my husband's aunt Lara, and mm -hmm. most of them date back at least to the 1930s. I'd put the things aside a long time ago to work on when I quote retired, <laughs> and uh, after having running out of things to do, uh, the house wouldn't stand another picture or another <laughs> pillow or another <laughs> afghan. I pulled out the quills. I've already done one and pieced it all in one piece and quilted it all in one piece and uh, much to my surprise and pleasure it took viewers choice at the Charlotte Quilters Guild quilt show at I, the Observer last spring. I remembered seeing that it was lovely. There's one thing about these fabrics they are very tightly woven and in trying to pull my needle through sometimes, the thread and the needle are hard to hang on to. Mm -hmm. So I use a little rubber fingertip and it mm -hmm. works beautifully. Mm -hmm. It will grasp the needle and I can pull it through. I've used one of those on my offhand too. My, I get kind of a callus here and I found mm -hmm. that if I put one on my offhand it works nicely also. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the combination of those colors are so pretty. And I notice you're kind of almost quilting in the ditch, aren't you? Yes. Real close to where quilting in the ditch on each one, then I have a small fan or Dresden plate pattern in the corner. Mm -hmm. Turn over the back, Maxine, because right. we were looking at that earlier and it looks so pretty already what you've got started. Oh, that's lovely. It really is. Just lovely. I want to spend just a few minutes uh, talking about your guild. I know that um, it has grown so the first time. Now just keep quilting because we're going <laughs> to, I want I want everyone to be able to see how you do handle that. But I. I just admire your group so the first time I saw you you were in a small library room the next time I came down you were in a huge room in a church and I kidded you about going to the Coliseum next and it has grown from what eight members to over a hundred over 118 months oh uh, we that have is just been so pleased with the turnout the number of people we knew were in Charlotte who were quilters but we couldn't find them and uh, finally we did and I then know. they began to find us well, I know for me, just getting with a group and being able to forget about everything and just concentrate on your, on, your, on your cloth and talk about a new pattern or something you've just learned or sharing, it, it's, a real, it's a real fun thing to get to, together because you're learning and you're producing. And, um, well, we've had some interesting programs in the last few years and uh, so many newcomers come mainly to see the program, but then they find they're thoroughly into the whole subject and all sorts of things are beginning to happen your eyes open to design all around you and color right. and you begin to look at things in a new way and everyone's caught up in this fever now uh, and uh, besides the comradeship it's been uh, a great an education really for all of us who've been involved I in know it. it have you had any men join your group yet no, no. Not yet. <laughs> well <laughs> maybe we'll get one now but one of the nicest things i think we do since our meetings are at night since most of our ladies do work uh, we've started what we call social hour and and that's at 6.30 to 7.30, and everybody brings a bag supper or their dessert or something to drink. Oh, and, and so we have an hour of just sitting around sharing what mm -hmm. we are doing before our regular meeting. That's good. What, now, I notice, um, Sue, that you're in a motherly way. Have you made your baby quilt yet or <laughs> planned your blue and pink quilt yet? Or? <laughs> uh, not yet, but I'm working on you're it. You're working on it. Okay, I'm glad. Well, I do have the fabric picked out. Well, that's good. I. I mentioned earlier that uh, Ellen was doing something for someone and um, I've had mixed feelings about doing commission work. I've done a, f a couple of quilts that have gone away and I, I know you probably feel like I do. It's like you've lost a child. Yeah. And I was talking to a gal at a craft fair one time and she had an interesting 
thought about it. And that's all she does is work for other people. And she said that when she was quilting, she concentrates on the cost of ground beef and um, <laughs> maybe the latest <laughs> fender bender that her teenagers had. And then when she sells the quilt, all those bad things just go out the door. And I thought that was a good, a good theory to have. Well, I, I uh, agreed to do this for someone in Charlotte who had admired something that I had in the Charlotte Quilt Show. And uh, he wanted to buy it. And I had made that particular piece for my husband for his office. And my first reaction was, no, I couldn't possibly sell that. So then he said, well, if you would ever consider making another one, I'd like to buy it. So I particularly like this man. He's been awfully nice to our group. And I wanted to do something. I feel that he appreciates it. Right. It will not go in a corner. In fact, I know where he's going to put it. Oh, and he selected the colors. I don't think I could let someone dictate to me what I was going to do and what colors to use. I feel that I have to do my own thing with it. I have to That's select true. the pattern and the colors I agree with you. in order to do be you, comfortable. Do you mm -hmm. work two projects ahead? I mean, while you're yes, finishing always. one, you think of a new one mm -hmm. that you, you're dying to do. Mm -hmm. It's In a way, it's frustrating. The new magazines come out, new books, and you think you're all settled on the perfect quilt, and then something new comes out, and you think, uh-oh. <laughs> I do find, though, that I have a tendency to finish things. I may be working on four or five mm -hmm. things at one time, but I like everything I'm doing so much that I I finish the things, mm -hmm. and then I'm very proud of them. I know so. it. I, I find that um, a lot of my students go mm -hmm. all the way through to the end, and I think I think that's so encouraging. Mm -hmm. Who wants your projects to end up in a closet somewhere? I think it's important well, to finish. Well, I do have needlepoint pieces finished, which no one has finished for me. <laughs> that's so right. they're still you waiting to be made into in pillows. needlepoint and then yes, switched was, over to quilting. Yes, I was quilting. doing a lot of needlepoint and other embroidery. And I figured a stitch was a stitch. And I wanted quilts, and they took a lot of stitches. But really not as much as you put in a large needlepoint mm -hmm. piece. So I find it satisfying I from understand. that angle. Sue and I have mm -hmm. had a chance last year to um, travel over to Chattanooga to Betts Ramsey's little, um, well, it's more than little, it's a wonderful big symposium that she has. And I think the thing about Betts Ramsey's symposium is that each year she has a different theme. And I think that's, uh, I hope everyone gets a chance at some point to go to a, a symposium or a large quilt convention because it, uh, it really makes it so nice to, to share ideas. And uh, quite often you have professionals giving workshops. And I think perhaps Maybe you've uh, had someone, someone's book and you've studied under them or seen them, but then when you actually get to see the real thing, their, their quilted works, it's always very exciting. So, yeah, well, and then the, just the thrill of having two or three hundred people of the same interest and just eating, sleeping, working, talking quilts right. for two or three days right. is, is <laughs> enough to charge you up for the whole year so, so that you can go back and get to work. I, I guess you're right. I guess you're right. It's, um, but I, th I think it's important. Um, I'm proud of, of the board, the symposium that has evolved out of this state, and hopefully that's the kind of thing that uh, counties and other states and even parishes can do because um, I know my husband was kidding me one time after we took a long drive across the state one day to come to a meeting, and he said, well, why do you have to have a club like that? And I took the remaining three hours going back explaining to him why I was going to make certain that he knew, and uh, I think it does mean some sacrifices on the part of your family. but. Uh, to me, the rewarding thing is, even for your children, to see that you can get so involved in something that you almost lose yourself. And uh, I, I think it's important. It's a good, it's a marvelous out. Don't you feel that way? Yes, it it's, is. it's more than just a craft. It I think is. you forget about yourself and everything mm -hmm. else. I think it's. I, a, um, I find myself worked up over the uh, right. designs that I'm putting <laughs> I know. in. Uh, you end up, one thing leads to another. Y you start out with one little piece of research for a quilting design or a piece of fabric, and the next thing you know, you're doing research into old fabrics, and then you start looking at all fabrics, and you see things that you hadn't really noticed right. before, and it opens your eyes to color, Let me too. ask you this. A lot of people have asked me, what determines a calico? Now, all I really know is that um, I know the word calico came from the word Calicut, India, mm -hmm. and perhaps that was where they first started, but is it true that a, a that a calico is simply a small little print, but it's always the kind of print that you can see on the reverse side. When you, do you have any terminology that? No, I don't. I think most people today think of calicos as these the small little prints. I don't think they were always the small prints. I think that the interesting thing today is to have a collection of fabrics like Anne has mm -hmm. here. Uh, a lot of people will ask me, well, where did you get your fabrics? Can I go out and buy some like you just put in that mm -hmm. quilt? 
and I can't really because maybe I've collected them over three or four years and I try to visit fabric stores all around the country mm -hmm. and if I leave the country some interesting fabrics from other countries this what is what I think makes it very very interesting and Anne has such a variety oh, in here I and she's going to enjoy colors. looking at this every time fabrics. she uh -huh. sees it for the rest of her life oh and she makes quilting more interesting it when does. you have I different know. things to look and at maybe maybe each one has a personal oh yes <laughs> Memory. Uh, I remember here I got some <laughs> <laughs> picked up this piece or that piece. Well, it's the old story about you get so uh, we invariably go to the remnant box, don't we? Right. Because yeah, we feel that here we are creating something out of maybe something that didn't cost as much as it should or something like that. It's been so nice having you here today. It really yeah. has. I hope we've had yeah. some we've some good close-ups and seeing everything the way you've held yeah. a needle. We're going to concentrate next show in what happens after our blocks are put together and the fact that um, we, we need to build them, putting them together into large rows, whether or not you're working on a hoop or uh, an entire quilt. Thank you so much for being with us. We enjoyed Thank it. Thank you for having us, Georgia. Having mm. us. Enjoy it, too. Georgia Bone Steel is the author of the book, Lap Quilting with Georgia Bone Steel, based on this television series. Thank mm -hmm. you.